and you have to wait another hour for your team to pick because it happened to win two stupid games and good players come off the board and you end up without those good players and are selecting from a group of players that are not leftovers or remnants, but they're not as good. It's not as good when you have to wait in line to pick. So to me, you, you're getting the very small short term hit or high from a win that is offsetting the pleasure of knowing that the team is having the best opportunity to improve or to deal. I mean, these are the the massive amount of money, really, even between a second overall pick and a fifth or sixth overall pick in terms of value and trades. It's kind of non-negotiable. So you should do, I think. So when you, going back to sort of, I guess, the the indie game that we've talked about with you and sort of the last month that we've had with this team, and now they are starting to win some games. And I know you said, or loosely with the, the decision potentially being made. And no, then no, dis- no, 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 loosely. The decision was made. Okay. The decision was made, you know, whether Bill Belichick can flip the Patriots' mind. Sure. We'll see, but go ahead. So that's So that's kind of where I wanted to go here. So decision was made, minds might be able to change. These two two wins over the last three weeks, and then we go into Buffalo and New York. Is this enough, do you think, to really change their mind, or you still think they're going to go in that one no, direction? Okay. No, I don't think this in itself is enough. I think that at the end of the season, Bill Belichick is going to have to make an extremely compelling argument as to why the Patriots fell off the precipice in 2023. Why did they, despite the ultimatums, and saber rattling from Robert Kraft, did they fall off the precipice? You know, Bill has to convince them to change their minds because it's certainly trending in one direction in a, a win over Denver, which in hindsight, it really looks like they were protecting Russell Wilson for a large swath of that second half, doesn't it? I mean, they were, they were running the ball exceedingly yeah. and drawing boost from the crowd. And in hindsight, I'm like, were they play calling to stop him from being in peril? But, you look at that win, you look at the Pittsburgh win, and they were great, and they were stirring, and they showed that the team hadn't quit. But the team that was on the field is one that's the worst offense in football. And you're about to go into a period where you have the third highest amount of cap space. You have a top three pick or top four pick. You have to rebuild your offense. To what end would be keeping Bill Belichick around? Why did it fall off the ledge? Why will it be better than it's been for a team that has, especially on offense, been spiraling really since 2017. 2018 was an 11 and 5 team. It was plagued by some offensive inefficiencies. Brady pulled their asses out of the fire with Edelman and Gronk in the running game. 2019, it wasn't a good offense, and we've seen similar results for the past four seasons. I think we could all agree. So why will it be different? And to what end would you bring Bill Belichick back? They didn't arrive at that decision that I reported on merely because of anything that happened in Germany. It was a long time coming. A long time coming. So to change minds, Bill Belichick will have to have a lot of charm going on. He might have to appeal to Robert Kraft's sentiment. I don't know what kind of allocations he would make to his own job title to get the crafts to change their mind. I don't know if they're widely open to it, but I think they'll listen. You mean as far as keeping him as head coach and then, you know, bringing in someone in the front office type deal, right? I don't know. I mean, yeah, whatever allocations that would require, Mike. <laughs> I don't I mean, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I just, I just laid it out for like two minutes. He's like, so you mean, yeah. So I mean I don't know what allocations would be. Okay, let me, let me give you an example and and I don't I know sometimes we're hesitant to sort of talk about the opinions of others in the market and we respect each other I feel like for the most part in this oh, little yeah. pool that is the Patriots beat. But Mike Reese has been promoting the idea of late that he would keep Bill Belichick, he would keep Bill O'Brien, he would keep Mayo and and Steve Belichick, he would bring back Josh McDaniels and he would bring back Dave Ziegler, what are your thoughts on that being what could take place in January? 
what are my thoughts on whether it'll take place or not? Or no, what no, are my no. thoughts on the the idea, the plan. How do you, how do you feel about that? Oh. I don't love it. I think I think there's more of a new broom sweeps clean type of approach that needs to be used because you're going to have the overlord in place in Bill Belichick, in which many people will continue to be genuflecting towards his wishes. If you want that then don't saber rattle. Don't say you got to produce. Don't say this has to happen and that has to happen. And, you know, what... I think that the incestuous nature of the Patriots organization in terms of not thinking outside the box and not kicking over every rock, whether it be for draft picks... Excuse me, when they do their draft... uh, When I say draft picks... You, you don't you don't see a lot of players from across the landscape drafted by the Patriots. They often go back to the same mm-hmm. um, coaches and colleges. So I don't think that the when I say the incestuous nature of the Patriots organization is that we're just going to keep recycling people who've been here, whether or not we're convinced they're the best person for the job because we're comfortable with them. And the comfort, the notion of comfort, the notion of, I know this guy, I know what he's about, he knows what a good football player is, or at least my definition. That has become the most important asset. And I guess when people talk about radical change and embracing radical change, maybe the Patriots need to do that, or they'll be mired in this level of mediocrity. That they, do, they don't broaden their horizons much, which isn't to say that you know Gerard Mayo, who's learned at the knee of Bill Belichick, is necessarily broadening horizons. But I would think that his approach would be vastly different. So, all right, we have two games left here, then, Tom, and we talk about and we you Thank mentioned God. it, yeah, decisions being made and decisions to have to be made, and the the season ends next Sunday at home against the Jets, and then there's Black Monday, and then there's sort of that week, and then is you this get in. Going to be a hypothetical. Is this going to be a hypothetical? Feels like it. We're driving down hypothetical well, when, lane. Yeah, when does okay? So when does when does the decision actually become made, and then when do we know when something is happening? Is this going to be a fast process, or is this going to be dragged out by the team? From the reporting done by folks at NFL Media, they said it was going to take a long time. It's a hypothetical. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how long they're going to drag it out. I don't know how much of a premium they're going to put on any kind of compensation for Bill. I don't know how persuasive Bill might be in any sit-downs. I don't know. Okay. Let Sorry. me ask you. <laughs> you don't have to get mad at him. You're like Bill Belichick. I'm not big on hypotheticals yeah. here. Me? Yeah, <laughs> come on. I mean, it's like, well, because I end up saying something, and then it's, well, Karen said that it's going to be fast. How come I'm going to write fast? it up for <laughs> WE.com. Okay, this. so you, you're probably not going to like this question either because it's sort of a hypothetical, but I think you're very informed uh, in this world. And this is actually uh, coming from our Twitch chat. They want to bring this topic to the uh, forefront it's something we've all talked about, the Jonathan Kraft role in this decision. You know, Robert Kraft said last year, Bill Belichick runs my football team. But what is Jonathan's role in this? Because at some point, it's going to be Jonathan's football team. So how does he fit into the hypothetical plans of January and beyond? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the division of persuasiveness is in on the behalf of both men. I mean, it is Robert's football team. It is his nuts on the line, largely in the court of public opinion with the media, with the fan base. Um, so the decision I think ultimately would be his, the final decision, which isn't to say that Jonathan's input opinion experience is not massive. So the final decision would be Roberts would probably be kind of a Pioli Belichick type of Mm -hmm. situation. If you can't agree, then you move on. You know what I mean? Yep. So, I mean, there's, you know, was everybody in lockstep at allowing Bill Belichick to make the decision on Tom Brady? You know, Robert said, go ahead, do what you think is the best thing to do. And they did that. Would Jonathan have felt differently four years ago? Does Jonathan feel differently now? Um, you know, remains to be seen, and we're going to find out soon enough. But I, I do think it's not really a hypothetical in that 
the the buck stops with Robert. Right. But him being 82 and understanding that Jonathan, look, this decision that you make with Bill isn't just for 2024, it's for the rest of the decade. Because you're going to be attached to a quarterback that Bill would be selecting until 2028, at least. And that quarterback will get the care and feeding of a Bill Belichick program for the first year, at least, Poor guy. if Bill stays. So, so Tom, so, I'll get you out on this, as Andy Gresh likes to say. Um, we haven't brought up Bailey Zappi. We talked about the wins. My question. Oh, sorry. Well, sorry. Bailey Zappi. What, have you changed your opinion on Bailey Zappi? What do you think Bailey Zappi has accomplished over the last two to three weeks? What is the upside of Bailey Zappi moving forward? Bailey Zappi, to me, has gone from probably about the 65th best player at his position in the NFL to somewhere around 38 to 45. Nice. Good jump. Maybe even 35 to 40. Ooh. He is now, to me, an entrenched, reliable backup who you can look at and say, he can play for me if my quarterback gets hurt. I would not want him to be a an anointed bridge quarterback. For instance, when March comes, I'd still want to see the Patriots add a veteran free agent because they have to, because they can't be assured what they're going to get in the draft. So adding a veteran free agent quarterback with Bailey Zappi there, and then you draft somebody else, and if it's a first round or a second round, and then when the season begins, your veteran free agent quarterback and Zappi will compete to start. You want the veteran to win because he's probably got a better arm, more experience, taller, and you'd feel okay with Bailey Zappi being your two. So while I'm people who love Zappi out there might be saying, oh, he's really hosing Zappi here. No, he wasn't a conceivable backup until the past three weeks. He's earned that. But a lot of guys turn into pumpkins. And that's what I would be leery of with Bailey Zappi, the same way with Josh Dobbs or Tommy DeVito. Is he Gardner Minshew or is he Tommy DeVito? Do we know? We'll find out. Stay tuned. He is Tommy Curran, and according to the text line, he sounds like Bradfoe due to his cold. Tom, uh, I hope you feel better. I hope you enjoy the Patriots game this weekend. I'm glad to hear you don't have any significant illnesses, and I'm sorry you had to put up with Cadillac's hypotheticals. Sorry, Tom. Cadillac was fine. Cadillac was <laughs> fine. I'm going to text them offline. We're going to talk about distilling questions. <laughs> Give me a buzz. All right, Tommy Curran, thanks for joining us on the Harbor One Hotline. Appreciate it. Sooner or later, I will learn which pauses are time for a new question or which pauses are Tom just continuing yep, to collect his thoughts. That. I'm not quite.